There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Ex-love. Ex-tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of a logic zone. Do you really? All right. Nothing town to fuck all, Borough. Great choice, Elder One. It has always been like this, and it always will. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really, all recollection of the person you are the people in your life and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. With all the synapses you've extinguished, it's a miracle you can even think this sentence. You've interrupted a true act of self-annulment here. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. 
Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. It's not. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Please promise yourself you are not going to try it on any of the ladies. Whatever happens. That's right. Not even yourself. Go ahead, try something. It's not an order. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Something you've done before. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist, like the green shoe that's on the hat rack in the corner, which, coincidentally, is missing its friend. Congratulations, you smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie, you swoop up and catch the tie. Snap, it's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous necktie with four or five different patterns. 
the knot reminds you of a noose. The blades come squeaking to a halt. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. It's just a little hangover-induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. The lights are off. Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. The young woman shakes her head slowly. No, you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. <laughs> no, you see, that's not what you said. You said... <laughs> Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cop are you? Okay, that's cool. Or if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit. I have certainly been entertained. Thank you. Whatever you are, you should stick to it. Otherwise, it's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. The door is closed. This door can only be as you hold the metal. You sense the warmth left there by her hand. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on, somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door does not care. Still no answer. Still nothing. You should punch a fucking hole in it. You slam your fist into the vinyl. It does not produce a hole. The door sits sturdily in the frame, and your fist hurts. This was all a very good, normal thing to do. Not to mention, great exercise.
A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he is purposely ignoring you. Looks like he's not a fan. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. She just, you know... A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Yes, you are. A real decorated hero. What did you not do? First you took the body down, then you solved the murder, then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. No, you see, actually you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. You're utterly, and it needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. Whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? He is your half-brother. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. No, you won't. Raphael Ambrosius Gusto 
is one classy name and you're one classy cop. Say it. Yes, well. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Right. And the interviews? Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Mm-hmm. Sure. But did you take it down from the tree? Does that mean the body is no longer in the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. What a shame. Get to it now. Rip that body down from the tree. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. He nods. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. I don't know anything about that either. As I said, I didn't write it. Pig is a widely used term for members of the police. It's not loving. No need to worry, we are not saying you did. Okay. Well, since the street sign's messed up. Okay, oh that. That's right there, in the yard. She's relieved someone has come for it. Fine. What do you mean? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This in he knows where we are. He just wants directions. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. 
the harbor gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. Rows of stalls under a broad roof where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens in the shadow of the old church. I don't know. The abandoned kind? It used to gather every spring, but there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Me? I am just a gardener. I'm working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. Well, as you already know, there's a corpse there, hanging from a tree. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with, after all. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Really? None. Maybe just a tiny bit of annoyance. of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. <laughs> 